Welcome to Cannabis Health Radio, a podcast where we share stories from people around the world who are using cannabis as medicine. The information is meant to raise awareness about the health benefits of cannabis, but should not be taken as medical advice. Now, here are your hosts, Ian Jessup and Corey Yelland. And we welcome you to another episode of Cannabis Health Radio. I'm Ian Jessup. And I'm Corey Yelland. Worldwide, back pain is the single leading cause of disability, preventing many people from engaging in work as well as other everyday activities. And experts estimate that up to 80% of the population experienced back pain at some point in their lives. Our guest today has an incredible story of living with severe back pain since she was a teenager, and it got so bad that one day she took a handful of pharmaceuticals. And joining us from Johannesburg, South Africa, to tell her story is Yolana Petster. Yolana, thanks very much for doing this. You, uh, you have an incredible story. Do you recall how your back pain first started? Hi, Ian. Thanks for welcoming me. Um, I actually just finished school. I was very active in high school. I played first team hockey. Um, then I went to the South African Air Force. And then I realized, but this chronic back pain is not going away. They will give you some anti-inflammatories and it will go away about for two, three weeks. Then it returns. And yeah, it just got worse from there. And uh, take us through what a typical day was like for you. Oh, I would, I would really contemplate getting out of my bed. Um, you, you go to bed with backache. You can't sleep properly. You sleep with about twelve pillows on your bed, um, constant tossing and turning, and frequently getting up just go and walk around so you can get the feeling back in your legs because you actually don't know what's going on and nobody can give you answers and this goes on day after day after day day after day non-stop you actually start to sound like a mole if somebody asks you how you feeling you say oh i've got back pain my back is sore i've got pain it's like a constant thing you have to repeat because everybody knows you're suffering with back pain Now they keep on asking you, and meanwhile, you're just trying to cope with the pain that's going on, and you're not sleeping well, you're not feeling well, you want to do things with your children, and you can't do that. Your children is two, three years old. My children was small then, and I actually couldn't play with them. I had to play with them for like 10 minutes, and I had to go sit down. I couldn't carry them. I couldn't pick them up. Um... Just going to a grocery store was a huge effort for me because the floor tiles are too slippery and I know if I just slip for a moment or two, then I would be down for two weeks in bed. Did you um, pretty much constantly have no feeling in your legs? It started off with my right leg. It almost felt like your hip will be displaced with a sharp stinging pain down your leg um then your leg will go numb but mine was predominantly on the right and that went on and the more i told the doctors that something's not right they did all these tests and eventually um they told me yeah my muscles my stomach muscles is too weak i need to strengthen that because that can't keep the vertebrae up straight really so you had yes. weak stomach muscles, and, and what did they tell you? Just to exercise your stomach muscles and you'll be fine? Exercise. They, they put me, um, the hospital put me two weeks in traction. And after that, the neurologist came back. She said, well, um, the only thing she can see is my, think of is that my stomach muscles um, is too weak. Uh, that was in 2002. After, I must add, after one night, I was standing in my kitchen and I just went numb from my mid waist down. So they admitted me, did all these tests, and then the doctor came back and said, yeah, your stomach muscles must be too weak. You must just exercise them. So- At this point point in the game, how many many pharmaceuticals are you taking? Yeah, I was on that stage on about 
six to ten different shades of five medicine. Six to ten. Yes, three times a day. Three times a day. So are we talking um, analgesics, anti-inflammatories, a combination of both? A combination of both plus steroids. Okay, so we're, we're, can you name a couple that you were on that people might recognize? Um, Cox Flam, I don't know how many of these you've got there, but we've got Cox Flam, um, Tramagesic, Tramadol. Um, sure, that's only a couple I can think of that I was on then. That right. was still the light things. <laughs> so, Yolanda, when did you have your first surgery? Um, that was actually in 2007. What happened, I was in the, I went over to the South African Police Force and I was at um, a place in the Northwest West Province. I was stationed there. And actually the same thing that happened in 2002 happened there again. And I went to the doctor then and he said, no, that's not right. Something, there must be something must be up. So he sent me to a, a neurologist in Rustenburg and I went to see him and he did an MRI. And that was about 11 o'clock in the morning. That night, around about nine o'clock, I was still sitting at the x-ray department waiting for the neurologist to see me. And my husband then, um, he went to the guy, the receptionist, and he said, listen, we've been sitting here since this morning. What's going on? And he found the neurologist because he was in surgery and he said, ma'am, please, um, doctor said, you're not allowed to move like two inches. You need to sit still. He's sending a bed down now because um, there's something. He'll come and see you after surgery. So I went on the bed and I went up 11 o'clock that night. The doctor came to see me and he had a look at my scans and he said, did a horse kick you on your back? Did you fall? What did you do? I said, nothing. He says, I've got bad news. Your back is broken. Whoa. Hmm. He says, it's like two centimeters and you will be paralyzed for the rest of your life. So he went ahead and he scheduled me for emergency surgery and they did a one level fusion with a transparented bone and a steel cage and some other hardware in my back. And it went okay, but I still had that numb feeling in my right leg. It did not go away. But I went on, you still know, you go from one doctor to another. Hopefully you can find someone that can explain to you what's going on. And eventually, um, I started working in a government department in South Africa and I went to see a proper doctor and he did quite a lot of scans and stuff. So he told me, he says, oh, yeah, you've got osteoarthritis. So I said, okay, fine, what are you going to do? He says, no, we need to fuse another three levels of your lower, lower back. So I said, okay, let's do that. Then it went well. That was in 2008. Then in 2011, some of the screws, the, the, the bolts and stuff they put in, it moved because I fell down the one day so they had to operate again, uh, fusing another level. In 27, that is 2017, that is actually where my life started changing. Um, the one doctor told me I've got spinal stenosis and disc degenerative disease. So it basically means that um, my spine is crumbling. And on the other hand, if they do an operation, the bone that they take from my hip to transplant, it grows too fast and it's now growing, it's narrowing my spinal column. So I can wake up any day, I can be standing now, I can just be paralyzed for the rest of my life. It's, there's no time limit on it also. So in 2017, August, um, I woke up the one morning and I was paralyzed from my neck down. I couldn't switch off my alarm clock. Um, my, my daughter actually was thinking I was making a joke when I told her I can't switch off. 
So eventually I went in to a hospital. I was in hospital for about four days. They did an MRI again. Um, no doctor came to see me actually. And after the fourth day, I saw another lady that was lying next to me. I saw her doctor and I asked, please, can somebody just have a look at my MRI? I want to know what's going on. I can't move. I can't, you know, I can't do nothing. I'm paralyzed and nobody's telling me what to do. And he then came and he said, oh, but you're going to ask this and this doctor. So I said, but I know that doctor because he did my first back off. So he came in and when he saw my MRI, he was actually standing outside in the passage and he started to whistle. And that's not something you want your doctor to hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, so you just must have been so scary too to be lying I, there waiting I'll to hear what's going on. And I tell you, I just told him, I said, well, you don't actually do that. You're like a mechanic that looks under the bonnet and just whistles because there's so much problems. So he said, yeah, well, I've got bad news. Um, four of your vertebrae just burst. And it's pinching on nerves and your spine is bent and things like that. All of the nice stuff. So I said, okay, what are you going to do now? I said, no, another sh surgery. Now you must know, after all these medications, I've been on Oxycontin, Lerica, Gabapentum, um, you name it, sleeping tablets. I just walk into a farmer's or, or into a doctor's consultancy and I say, this is a medication I want. Because at one stage, you just want to get rid of your pain. So you start drinking meds to actually get high. To, to forget about that pain. Mm -hmm. and that is how bad my, not only my pain, but also my addiction to these pharmaceuticals was. And so I went for the operation. It went well for three months. In December, yeah, December 2017, I went for my follow up, my six weeks follow up. The doctor said, no, they have to operate again because one of the vertebrae didn't fuse properly. So I said, well, in that case, no. My body can't take any more. I've been on crutches and a wheelchair for the past year. I can't take any more. My work, I had a good job. And I'm mostly off sick because I can't handle just getting to work was an, was an issue for me um, because I had to use public transport. And so I started Googling around and um, I found this one doctor that's a pain specialist. Everybody recommended him and said, no, go and see this doctor. So I went to see him. He said, no, no problem. We do just another surgery. We recess the nerves in your hips and your neck and we do these little procedures. Then you'll be fine. Went fine for another three months and then it started all over again. I tell you, I was back on crutches. I was depressed and because you really put your hope in so many things because everybody promised you that you will get better. You will be better. And then it goes better for about two, three weeks and then you're back to square one. And eventually when you find a medication that works, not long after that, they remove it from the market. So, um, the one day I was sitting and actually one of my lifelong friends, I remembered that he's into cannabis and after his wife passed away due to cancer, um, he started making, he, he told me he's going to find a cure for cancer. And I remembered him that day and I sent him a WhatsApp and I said, listen, is this still your number? I need to be on your, I need to get your meds because I'm now at my wits end, I can't take it anymore. So little at that, you know, you get used to overnight quick fixes. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. You don't realize that it's quite a process. It's a, you're working with a natural medicine and everything that's na natural takes some time. So I started on, on the cannabis uh, medication. I use the um, full extract cannabis oil and also topical ointment that I used. And 
at that stage, I was really, really down in the dumps because I followed everything that everybody told me and advice. I did exercises and nothing worked. Now, this friend of mine, he comes and he tells me, no, use this. So after a month, I feel like, you know what, you also made me promises. This is not working. My daughter's finishing with trick. My son is nine years old. What's there left for me? I... I can't do anything. I can't. The heaviest thing I'm allowed to pick up is a sho empty shoebox. Because you never know if you pick up something too heavy, is it going to snap your back or what's going to happen? Are you going to be able to stand up tomorrow morning? Mm -hmm. And I was really, really depressed. And the one I, I just decided, you know what? My kids got a terrific date. Everybody's taken care of. So. Instead of just being like a, a, a mole on everybody's neck, just saying, I've got back, I've got back, back ache, just take yourself away. And I drank a, a lot of tablets. And as I told you, some of those were Schedule 6 medicine, OxyContin. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I remember, I woke up with the paramedics and my daughter standing next to my bed. And that is where my eyes woke up and I realized how close to death I actually was. And just because of pain. That is uh, absolutely remarkable. So you wake up, the, the paramedics are there and they take, take you to a hospital. What was going through your mind while you were there? I actually, I didn't, I didn't go to hospital. Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay. I didn't go to hospital, I refused. I just stood up and luckily what I learned from my friend in that period is, you know, you need to focus on what's there and then around you. And I sort of got myself out of that state. And that's why I realizing that there must be hope. Maybe if you go start looking at your thoughts, go and look at what you eat, go and look at Every day, things, small little things that you do, focus on the year now. And that's where I started. And I said, I'm going to take my medication, my, my FICO, and I'm going to put on my oils. I'm going to follow my diet, my alkaline diet, because um, I want to be better. I want to be a better mom for my kids. I want to be a better person. Um, I don't want to complain all the time. So, and it took a lot of myself to take that strength and just step up and say, I'm going to do this. And I don't care how long it's going to take me, but there must be a reason that I did not die that night. Absolutely. When you were taking uh, the cannabis oil, were you starting to wean yourself off your pharmaceuticals? Yes, um, at that stage I was drinking Simgen, Trazodone, Dobaqua, Lerica, um, Gabapentum, Atkadols, and sleeping tablets. I think it was Zolpidem or something like that. And I was thinking, I was drinking about, I would say about two or three weeks, and I started feeling sick. It was like, I just didn't know. I, I didn't feel very well. So I contacted my friend and I said, what's happening? So he explained to me that I'm busy detoxing and cannabis, the cannabis oil is actually taking over the function now of that medication. It's starting to heal my brain and my body. And this is, this is now where I need to start weaning myself off. And I have tried um, previously to wean myself off medication. So I actually know how to do that. Um, so I started halving my dosages. And I think it was three months. I just felt the one morning when I woke up, I don't need you anymore. I actually went and I flushed them down the toilet. Because I had no pain. I didn't wake up with pain. And, and my medication was next to my bedside because that was the first thing I had to drink in the morning just to get out of bed, was my medication. And when I woke up that morning, I just felt like I didn't need you anymore. 
That's uh, fascinating that all of a sudden it was like um, it kicked in and your body was in the healing process. And you, yeah. you intuitively knew that you didn't need your pharmaceuticals. That's correct. You just, it was just like my body told me, you don't need that anymore. Interesting. What, how, how long after you started taking oil before you noticed it making or having any kind of impact? Um, I started the first change. I started noticing about six to seven weeks. Then I realized okay, my, I can handle my pain better. Um, my mind's more clearer. I sleep better. And that's the most important thing. I didn't sleep well. And one of my first years told me the one day, she asked me, she said, but how are you sleeping? I said, I don't sleep at all. If I got sleep like one or two hours a night, that was a miracle. So she told me that because I'm so tired, I, my brain cannot process the pain that I'm experiencing. And I'm getting depressed because I don't sleep. And it's just like an evil wheel going around the whole time. So you're off your you're off your pharmaceuticals. You're on cannabis. Are you? How, tell us how much you're taking every day. Um, at this stage, um, I'm actually not taking my cannabis oil as I'm supposed to. Um, I've uh -oh. been on it now for two years that I've been pharmaceutical free. I only take my oil now um, when it's raining because of the steel that's in my body and things like that. It does get painful. Then I'll drink my my infused oil. It's a broad spectrum infused oil that I'm using. And also I call it my can of butter, my miracle cream that I use as a topical ointment. Um, I've got, for example, I've got a um, spasm in my neck that if I sleep wrong or anything and I wake up tomorrow morning, I can't actually turn my head and it looks like a string from my shoulder to my neck. You can't believe it. I want to take a video of it one day. And when, as within five minutes after applying the cannabis, it's like it's gone. I've got no pain and I can function normally. Isn't that wonderful? Do you take? Do do you take? And were you taking all of your medicine orally, or did you do suppositories as well? Um, I. In the beginning, I used to do them only orally and then the topical cream. But I found that because I'm in menopause as well, and that's another story, um, I can't use hormone replacement therapy because I had a breast lump that they were worried about. So they don't want to put me on HRTs. And that's when I decided to use infused coconut oil in a suppository form, and that sorted the menopause. Um, Excellent. And I must say the breast lump was about five, five by seven centimeters a year and a half ago, more than a little bit more than a year mm -hmm. and a half ago. And we don't feel it anymore. It's gone. Nice. Yeah, that is. Uh, was it a benign breast tumor? Yeah. But it's gone. Fascinating. It's gone. That's really, so, uh, really a fascinating story. That uh, about your your progress has been remarkable, and I'm wondering. Give us give us an idea of what your life is like today, and compared to what it was like at your worst. At my worst, I didn't want to wake up. Actually, <laughs> now that's when you um, tried. That's when you took your overdose. Yes, yes, that was my worst. Now today is, I learned so much in what it does and how it works, and I know what my lowest was, and I so much know also that the are so many other people that's actually in my situation currently. I'm on so many groups that's got to do with spinal diseases and things. Mm -hmm. And my heart cries for them because I know what the answer is, but then they tell me, but it's not legal in our country. Yeah, what is the situation with uh, cannabis oil in South Africa? 
Well, at this stage, it's legal. I think let Andre quickly tell you that. He is the professor on that side. Hi there, everybody. Okay, we're, this is uh, Andre Britz, who uh, is... Okay, Andre, go ahead. Hi, um, yes, um, regarding legalization of cannabis, um, you can grow um, your own cannabis in your, your, your location or your house. Um, you can make your own medication. Uh, you are not allowed to sell it. Um, you're not allowed to sell the plant material and you're not allowed to sell medication. You can only prescribe medication if you are a practitioner or basically a herbal healer or a traditional healer. Um, or they call us traditional doctors. Um, we study for that. But you are allowed to make cannabis oil for your own consumption? Yes, you are. You are allowed to make cannabis oil for your own consumption. Um, but the knowledge in South Africa regarding cannabis is not that big. And um, that's why we are actually tr uh, training people at the uh, uh, Medical Cannabis uh, Academy. Um, we call it the Shiba Academy. And uh, yeah, um, that will get the people into it. And we also train medical doctors and professors regarding cannabis because the medical practitioners actually don't know anything about regarding uh, cannabis and how it works because it's not being studied. It's being labeled basically as a drug. Um, but in South Africa so far, um, we are still b battling. Um, hopefully in two months time, we'll probably get a, a results from the High Court in South Africa regarding the cannabis legalization. Can I ask, um, please, if you recall, were, were you using any particular strains uh, for this medicine for Alanda? Um, and also, um, was it a multi-strain oil that you did? Yeah, um, look, I specialize basically in the endocannabinoid system um, of the body. I don't know if you know about that. Um, so we're looking at your CB1 and CB2 receptors and um, in your brain and your spinal cord also and then all over your body but uh, the more we look at that we found that you need a broad spectrum of cannabinoids in yes. your medication um, basically because you need a lot of thc's your assets your delta eights delta nines your uh, cbds and your different 145 i think is now available um, that we can study in the world um, of cannabinoids in, in the world um, that's been identified also med medicinally. Um, so yeah, I, I was thinking about using, uh, well actually what I'm doing is I'm using five to six different strains. Um, I use a sativa or an indica and then um, you do get some hybrids in there, but what I do is I usually check the, the, the cannabinoid content, the percentage, and then from that I work at a broad spectrum so that I can have more than enough cannabinoids in the oil. Um, so it can look, if you look at the endocannabinoid system and how your THCs and CBD works on your CB1 and CB2 receptors, yeah. um, you actually then you can see how the cannabis works on the body as a whole and not just one specific disease. Um, so I would suggest this approach and that's how I make it. And that's how I result, see the results in my patients also, as I saw in Yolanda. So that is the best thing for me, but depends on also the condition the patient has and what type of oil um, you use. The terpenes are also very important in cannabis um, and if you can put in extra natural terpenes it will also help alleviating the pain for example black peppercorns um, with uh, cannabis in the mouth and it takes away migraines or pains in the body um, and that is part of your terpene that gets uh, gets released and works together with your cannabis I call them the, uh, like a married couple, 
Um, they basically actually fight with each other, but they cannot work without each other, you see. So they two have to work together, and that is important. So you have to use a broad spectrum. And if you use a uh, infused type of oil or uh, tinctures, I don't believe so much in tinctures because I don't believe in the alcohol side of that. Um, mm -hmm. And then also the full extract cannabis oils. Um, just to say one thing, in South Africa, we, we are lucky to um, actually have our oils tested. Um, for uh, percentages in THCs or all your different cannabinoids, and then also your 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 basic um, uh, contaminants that's in there, and that you don't want a human to 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 con uh, consume. Right. So in South Africa, it's it's, it's the best, uh, and I teach it also to my students. Uh, the best is to use a broad spectrum, yes. Great. Thanks, Andre. I appreciate it. Yolanda, you, you will be yes. you will be on uh, cannabis the rest of your life. Do I have that right? Oh, definitely. I will. The only time, because I told you about my bad spot. Now, you know what? I actually can pick up boxes. I can play with the kids. I can... I've got energy, I can think clearly because my mind is not uh, cluttered with pharmaceuticals where you actually feel, you you feel numb. You don't have actually, you've got any feelings or something. You just drag yourself through the day when you're on pharmaceuticals. Where with cannabis, my whole life really changed. I built stronger relationships. I'm, I'm just doing more than what I used to do. I sleep better. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, Yolanda, we really appreciate you reaching out to us um, and uh, telling your story because uh, you have a remarkable story from someone who really attempted suicide because the pain was so bad and you didn't want to live to someone who is off her six to 10 medications and has been off for two years. You were wheelchair bound and you're out of that. And now it seems you're recovering well. And we thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for having me. I just want everybody to know there is hope and I really pray and hope they legalize cannabis everywhere. Thank you so very much. Bye. And we don't have any sponsors on Cannabis Health Radio, and the reason we don't is because they can sell CBD and you can pick up CBD anywhere, and quite frankly, uh, with so many companies, you don't know whether it's quality CBD or not. So what we do is we rely on listeners for their support to support Cannabis Health Radio. You can become a monthly supporter for as little as $5 a month on our Patreon page, and also if you want to make a one-time donation, Go to CannabisHealthRadio.com and make a donation and we'd appreciate it very much. And we'd like you to spread the word about our show on uh, whatever platform you listen to our podcasts on, and there's so many out there. You can share also the podcast on your social media because you might save a life. And we encourage you as well to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share that with others who you think may be interested. And thank you once again for listening to Cannabis Health Radio. We'll be back again next week. Thanks for listening to Cannabis Health Radio. For more information and to search previous podcasts, visit our website, CannabisHealthRadio.com. Subscribe so you don't miss new episodes. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This podcast is made possible by donations from our listeners. If you found the information helpful, please consider making a donation in any amount through our website. You can also help us share our message by leaving a review on your podcast listening platform. We are very grateful for your support. Thank you.